Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Relationships. How many cheaters do you think get caught today because they don't know how to manage home technology? Like forgetting to log off from your email or your Facebook account when using somebody else's computer or phone, or that kind of stuff. Well, something very similar to that is what let OP catch his wife cheating. This one's from user Red Carped Blues. Me, 34 male, with my wife, 32 female, of 5 years. I know she's cheating on me, I can't bring myself to confront her. I, 34 male, met my wife, 32 female, 7 years ago at a party. She was the out of your league girl no one would hit on and I was the awkward boy in the corner trying not to stare. Eventually she was introduced to me by the host. We bonded over a shared love of darts, went on a few dozen platonic outings together and after one beer and darts filled night, a year later, we wound up in her bed and in a relationship. A year later, she proposed to me. She's the power person in our relationship. I am working as a chocolatier. She's a vice president in a large corporation. She works long days and longer nights. I cook and keep the house clean and work five days a week in a small artisan shop downtown. We're pretty high end, so I'm making good money, but she's making way more than twice of my salary. So she buys the toys for the house, including the new set top box for the TV. The set top box has a screensaver mode where it rotates pictures in your Apple photo library. Last week she was still at work. I came home from my day and the TV, which I'd used to watch a YouTube video that morning and definitely had turned off, was on screensaver. On it were pictures that must come from her phone, showing her, in our living room, one of her female friends and a guy I've never met, in very explicit poses. The pictures moved around the room, so I think there must have been a fourth person taking pictures with her phone, but I didn't see that person. What was weird was that she was wearing a bandage on her hand, something she'd done that morning after complaining about muscle pain. I left the TV on and was very shocked, but decided to leave the screensaver and see what she had to say when she came home later that evening. When she came home, the pictures seemed to have disappeared. They haven't shown up anymore since then on the TV. I asked her if she'd been home during the day because the TV was on, and she said she'd come home during lunch to pick up a USB stick she'd forgotten in her computer at home. I tried to ask her about the pictures, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. Now I have to add something. I am not a very experienced person in intimacy matters. I am an introvert and barely had relationships before her. Our intimate life is though, even for my experiences, very vanilla. I never had been given head in my life and only twice since we met. Suggesting it to her usually meant that she'd lecture me about not doing those things and doing it for the night was a no-go. In those pictures she did all the things she never wanted to do with me. Since that day I have tried to confront her a number of times. She stays out longer lately, not just since last week, for the past 4 months maybe, and she's often too tired for anything romantic, even just cuddling. And when she comes home, she often disappears in her office and comes to bed long after I have fallen asleep. But even during the time we had together, like this weekend, I can't bring myself to confront her. I am worried about what I might hear and what this would mean for our relationship. I still love her very much and can't imagine a life without her. How can I summon the courage to do this? Is there a way out of this? Well OP, in my opinion, a way out of this is divorce, separation, leave her. This is a person that clearly has no respect for you or your home. You should be incredibly angry. You should be setting up meetings with lawyers to see what your next steps are regarding making that divorce happen. Getting all your documents in order, trying to get proof that she has been cheating and then confront her man, hold your spine in place and confront her. But then again, that's just my opinion or what I would try to do. The good thing is that we have an update that tells us exactly what OP did, so let's continue with that. So, lots to tell. First off, however, a few things. Before I wrote this, I didn't know what a red pill was. Now I do. I kind of wish I didn't, but a few dozen messages kind of made that happen. 
You know those debt solution letters you get when you're known to the county to owe money? That's how those things came in, fast and furious. Some others assumed that my throwaway having the word red in it meant that I was a suck puppet for them. I am not. I don't think they've got a solution that isn't worse than the problem it pretends to fix. Well, what happened? I left the house that evening for a walk, she wasn't home, and called around for lawyers. It was pretty late already and I got a lot of voicemail, but one picked up. She asked me to get my financial statements and a lot of other things together and see her the next morning. I then decided to confront my wife that evening. That didn't happen. She came home very late and disappeared to take a bath almost right away. I snuck into her office and took her phone out from her purse. It had a fingerprint scanner, but her pin was the same she uses for the garage and our safe, which she set up, so that was easy. There was nothing on the phone that I could find. Pictures and Apple photos and Google photos were all from things we'd done together, and some for her job. No messages or so either. Just as I wanted to put the phone back, her bag buzzed. She has another phone. That one is an Android and had a pattern, so I couldn't log in. But on the screen was a message, phone number only, no name, with a heart on it. Put that back, decided to postpone confrontation until after lawyer, but took a photo of the message. Next morning, I talked to the lawyer and she spent about half an hour to just go over possible outcomes and what I can expect next. Then another 45 minutes talking about finances and so. We don't have kids and she's the big earner, so I stand to either be just out of the relationship or be out and owed some money. It'll be months, maybe even more than a year until all this is dealt with. Takes five minutes to marry, a year to unmarry, it seems. I'd walked back to my work and told my boss I was sick. I looked like crap from not sleeping and some crying, so that was pretty convincing. We work in food. Being sick is a bad idea at that job. Went home and unplugged the Apple TV and took it to a friend who runs a small computer store. He confirmed what you told me. The pictures on the screensaver are from her Apple photos. He's also the first I told and he immediately offered me to stay at his place with his wife and kids if I have to leave for a while. Then he called the number the text on my wife's other phone came from and told me a guy named Rob had answered it. Walked home and texted her if she'd be home for dinner. She texted back that she'd have to do some extra work and it could be late. So I told her to please make an exception and come home. I had important news. We'd been looking for a house for a while. I figured she'd think I finally found one. Well, dinner came and went and she didn't show. She came home around 10, smelling of cigarettes. She was all happy and asked me what I wanted to talk about. So I asked her to sit down. I'm 99% to making something up about the house and avoid the confrontation. But then, I guess for the first time, I felt a little anger, so I told her. I said, I know you've been cheating for a while now. I've been working with an attorney and we'll have to talk about these things at some point. So now is as bad a time for that as ever. She didn't blow up and deny it. She just deflated and started to shake. A lot of your PMs, my attorney and my friend, all told me not to press for details and not put that on me as well. But I really wanted to know, so I said, tell me about Rob. She told me they met through Anne, the friend on the couch with her, and Anne wanted to sleep with him while he had a crush on my wife. So they hatched this threesome plan. That was 14 months ago. Apparently, they've since included Rob's wife. That's the mysterious fourth person who took the pictures who is polyamorous with that Rob guy. The picture thing was solved too. She'd handed the wife her phone to take a few pictures and didn't remember the whole screen blanker thing. When she was at work, she'd uploaded them and deleted them from the phone. By then, by chance, I'd seen them. She had the second phone for precisely the reasons I thought, as one that isn't on our shared contract where I could see the incoming and outgoing calls in my statement. She also had short affairs with other women and a few men and most of her weekend work things were actually her and Rob going on short trips together. 
Through all this, it felt like she was giving me as much detail as she could in an effort to hurt me. And it worked, but I think I kept a pretty good poker face. I told her that I would leave the house, that I had photographed and cataloged everything and was hoping for an amicable separation. She simply declined, told me she'd leave and take a hotel for the time being, and put her keys on the table. She packed a few things and left. That was it. As this one commenter said, it was like the dentist. It hurt less than I thought it would, but still hurt damn much. Today, I have about 15 missed calls from her and 150 plus messages, all asking me for forgiveness and if we could make it work again. I agreed to meet her next week, but only to divide our possessions. As far as I'm concerned, this is over. Except for my one friend, no one knows yet. And I want to wait with making it public knowledge while I sort my stuff here and decide how I go from here. Might actually be hitting the gym. No intentions for a rebound relationship, and the rest, we'll see. Well OP, I think you made the right choice. Just end that relationship. She was having not just one affair with a polyamorous couple, but various affairs with other men and women. Come on man, it's a good thing you're out of there. What do you guys think? How would you have confronted this woman? Okay, now on that note, let's move on to the next story. Has a close friend of yours ever tried to convince you that your significant other is cheating on you? If so, who do you trust? Our next OP is actually faced with that situation. This one is from user friendconflict54. My 20 female friend, 21 female, is going to great lengths to prove that my boyfriend, 24 male, is cheating even though I know he isn't. So, I live with Emily, a person I met a couple of years ago. We became fast friends, admittedly moved in together last year out of convenience, but have stayed true to our friendship, which has definitely strengthened. My boyfriend is Sam, someone I met about a year and a half ago. We've been dating for just over a year, with our relationship transitioning into a long distance relationship about five months ago because Sam moved for work. I never thought that there were any issues between Emily and Sam. In our early stages, she was very gracious and seemed to know the perfect balance between socializing with Sam and giving us space. It was only when Sam moved away that she started making little comments about how funny it would be if Sam had a side chick in his new city, or that I was actually a side chick and he's gone home to his family. There is no way this is true. Sam has always been honest and open, has always mentioned that he quickly shuts girls down if they try it on with him. And as for the family thing, I helped him move into his small two-room apartment and not a family home. I've always shut this down very quickly whenever Emily starts on with it. However, recently she's been taking extra steps to try and make me believe that my boyfriend is cheating on me. She told me over dinner the other day that she had proof that Sam had slid into the DMs of one of her friends and showed me a screenshot of Sam's secret Twitter account hitting on her friend about 9 months ago. This account was not Sam's username at all, and just in case it had been a secret account, I searched the username and it came up with a profile of a 15 year old boy also called Sam. Though I told Emily this, she was insisting that this profile was my Sam and that he was clearly catfishing using this kid or that he was Sam's younger brother. Sam has no younger siblings. Last night, she sent me an SOS message saying that there was an emergency, but after rushing home to see what was happening, she said that the emergency was that Sam doesn't have his Facebook relationship on his profile and that it was obvious he's trying to appear single. The reason his relationship isn't public is because I asked for it not to be, since I don't believe that my relationship status is everyone's business. We are in a relationship on Facebook, but only privately. Yet again, I explained this to Emily, and she still tried to argue that he could still be cheating and that I was subconsciously manipulated to keep the status private by him. I really wasn't. I'll clarify here that I've never said to Emily that I think Sam will cheat on me in his new city because I don't. Simple enough. It may have been that she was jealous or wanted him for herself, but she's in a relationship of her own. Her boyfriend of two years is over usually two to three nights a week. 
I'm definitely going to put her on an information diet regarding my relationship, but should I consider going further? So OP clearly does not believe her roommate that her boyfriend is cheating. Why do you think the roommate is going through such lengths to get this message across? Of course, we do have an update, but before that, let's take a look at a few community comments and then move on with the update. Brendonis Toll says, Your friend is the world's crappiest detective. Doug Child says, Is there a benefit for her if you're single? Like, do you bring Sam over to your place a lot, or are you planning on moving in with him soon and away from her? Has she ever been cheated on in a similar situation? Lock your room and watch your phone. It shouldn't be, but that's how she'll get information if you stop telling her about you and Sam. Do tell her that you're no longer going to respond to her emergencies and put her on mute when possible. Then you only get upset when you're no longer busy. Suspectrobot says, She sounds a bit unstable and drama queeny to be honest. This is a case of has crazy theory tries to get the facts to fit. It doesn't really matter what her motive is. Tell her bluntly that you feel she's trying to ruin your relationship and that if she doesn't stop, the friendship will be over. Okay, so now we move on with the update. So I posted a few days ago about my housemate Emily who had made it her life's mission to try and make me see that my long distance boyfriend Sam was cheating on me. After posting my original post, I sat Emily down and told her that I would not be engaging in conversation with her about Sam at all. She tried to claim it was all in my best interests to listen to her, but did rein it in. Drama over. Until it all blew up. I got a very angry message yesterday from Emily's boyfriend calling me every name under the sun, including a homewrecker. I asked him what the hell he was on and he said that he knew all about how I'd been cheating on Sam and how I'd convinced Emily to do the same to him. It turns out he'd found out that Emily was on Tinder and was talking to guys and had even met up with a couple and done whatever. I had no clue she was doing this. Whenever she left the house for the night, she always said she was staying at her boyfriend's. I told him in no uncertain terms that I had not encouraged Emily to cheat on him and I was not cheating on Sam. He then tried to claim that Emily had told him that I was away getting with some Tinder guy on a specific evening that I wasn't in the flat. I was celebrating Sam's birthday with him in his city and had the timed and dated photos to prove it. And of course, Emily knew where I really was. I have no clue whether or not her boyfriend believes me but I haven't had any other messages from him since. Emily was wailing my door about 10 minutes later saying that her ex-boyfriend had gone insane and she only cheated because he was abusive. I can't say I saw anything, but I also can't say this was a definite lie. And she was scared about his reaction, so she said I was involved. She then said that I would understand her position if I had broken up with Sam like she wanted me to. I'll admit, that got my attention. I asked what she meant, and she said that she had wanted us both to be free from our partners, but she knew I wouldn't cheat on Sam, so she had tried her best to convince me that he was cheating so I would leave him. She got the door slammed in her face. Even if she did want an escape from her own abusive relationship, her non-stop attempts to persuade me to leave my boyfriend just for her own gain is enough for me to just cut her off. I didn't even wait until Emily woke up this morning to put my plan to move out into action. The landlord has been contacted and is very understanding. We're very close to the end of our tenancy anyway. So I'm breaking my lease and I'm going to spend the night in a friend's spare room before making my next move. I might write her a goodbye note, but she hardly deserves it. I've been wondering for a while whether or not I should move to be with Sam. I think this is now going to be a big part of my decision. Also, a lot of comments in the original post were suggesting that something had happened between Sam and Emily while he was still living in this area, and she was trying to make me see that without coming clean. I didn't reply to any comments because I know the sort of responses I would have got to. I know he's not cheated on me with Emily, but I do know he didn't. 
He never contacted Emily privately and was really only friendly to her because she was my housemate. Sam was just as unlikely to cheat with Emily as I was with any of his friends, family or housemates. I know some of you guys still think that he could still have cheated cheat in the future and I can't definitely say he didn't or won't. But I'm not going to ruin my relationship with what if style thoughts. And it's a good thing you didn't OP because that's just wasted energy. Also, it's really great that you never lost faith or belief in your boyfriend that he would not cheat on you, despite Emily's active campaign to try to get you to break up or cheat. Okay, well, we've reached the end of the video. I truly hope that you guys liked it. If you did, please go ahead and click like. If you still haven't subscribed, then go ahead and click subscribe with the bell so you get notified when I upload a new video. Also, here you'll find four different videos, two from Lost Genre, which is this channel, and two from my other channel, LG Reddit AITA, a channel focused exclusively on Am I the A-hole? So go ahead and give that channel a try. Alright, and having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.